I'm sitting outside of Derby. So if you're ever in Salem, Derby's a good spot to come and just sit out here and hang and uh, talk about the President's Cup. Might come down here and watch a little bit of it. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, we're all it's all getting under today as this podcast drops up at Royal Montreal Club. Um, and, yeah, so just kind of let's let's get into it. So we got, obviously, Jim Furyk, U.S. captain, Mike Weir, international captain. I mean, what were your kind of first thoughts on some of the, the captain's picks? I love that you went there because I was about to say there, there's a couple of things that I'm kind of harping on in this President's Cup season. One of them is the captain's picks. Team Furyk, we'll start with Team USA. I love that he just went 6 through 12. In the wake of the Ryder yeah. Cup stuff, and I would make some arguments for maybe an Akshay to get in there uh, just because he's a fresh flavor. Uh, but you know what? How can you argue over, the, you know, these are my 12, let's go out and do it. Let's just not worry about any of that. Um, anybody who's curious can't have Rooksy and Bryson because President's Cup owned by the PGA. Like, it's that's just a non-starter, so don't need this is what's wrong with the game. No, what's wrong with the game is what they did, but I digress. So I'm I'm all in favor of Coach Furyk, Coach Furyk, <laughs> Captain Furyk. Coach, put me in. Uh, and what he did just because of the time, like what's going on right now. The other yeah. side. I'm, I mean, he's a Canadian, so I guess it's one of those things. He can do it if he wants to, but to not have Nick Taylor suited yeah. up for this. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Canadian Open. And I was just explaining this to my brother-in-law. Uh, he's, he's like recently, last five years, just a super guy to do golf. And we were just chatting about it. And I was like, he goes, wait a minute. That was that dude, that tournament, the 53-footer, the Adam Hadwin tackle, the whole bit. Yeah. And you don't <laughs> have him out there? And he's in form. I mean, he finished He finished yeah, strong. He so, I mean, he was 12th on their list. And so you, so you kind of have that argument of, you know, he's left out. Then again, even if even when it's the host country, I think they're in a unique position in Canada to have four or five guys you could legitimately say these they belong on the team because you do have to take three steps back and go, you got four or five other continents to deal with. Um, but right. I would say I would rather see a, uh, <clears throat> no offense to men who leave, but he didn't make it too deep in the FedEx Cup. And I think you could have right. dropped him off uh, and put Nick Taylor on there. I agree with you. We were kind of talking about it previously, too, where it's uh, – you know, clearly USA just went, the, here's my 1 through 12. This is going to be it. Um, you know, we were talking t- like Tony, Homa, uh, Keegan. They're, they're playing okay. Uh, Keegan's coming off of that like uh, that hot start last. But other than that, I mean, nobody really there. They could have made an argument for them. Like, they could have been replaced. They could have been, you know. But on the on the international side, it's kind of what you're saying. I mean, there's a lot of, like, Big question marks where I'm like, oh, what the hell is going on here? So, earthquake in Salem. The only <laughs> spot I'll disagree with you is uh, I think Keegan solidified it when he won the BMW. Like here, here I am. I'm, you're yeah. not going to leave me off another team. I want a FedEx Cup playoff event. It's it is that big. Uh, I think you could have dropped Tony Finau off. He's not, and that's a victim of our expectations for him. He deserves to be there by the points or by the position, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But I think like he's not playing playing on brand Tony Finau golf to have that spot. So. Yeah, yeah. He, do you think this kind of is going to lead into uh, Keegan being a uh, playing captain for the Ryder Cup next year too? Do you think he's? Do you think he's already kind of thinking that? No, I think he's, I don't think he's thinking that. I think it's. Uh, He'd be lying if he said it wasn't in the back of his mind. Maybe I catch lightning in a bottle and kind of pull a tiger here because people forget it wasn't too long ago. Yeah, right. uh, Big Cat was playing captain for the President's Cup and, uh, and and won. And so I think that is is kind of on the horizon. At some point in our lifetime, we're going to have another playing captain on the Ryder Cup, I do believe. Might be Keegan because also, uh, what if he just gets there on points? You know, he just won the BMW. That said... Yeah. Tiger didn't take the gig because he said he wouldn't have enough time to dedicate to it wholly. What? And he really couldn't, you know, with all of his other stuff going on with TGL and, you know, t- Tomorrow Golf or whatever the hell. Yeah. If Keegan's going to go head over heels for the captaincy, is that going to allow him to play this kind of golf? Or does going head over heels for the captaincy and all that it entails free him up mentally to play this kind of golf? So all of a sudden right. it's like, hey, listen, this is how it is. So. I don't think he's thinking it. I think it's a distant possibility. Uh, but no, I think in the end, uh, what, what we're going to find is that if we really want the President's Cup to mean anything moving forward, 
we're probably going to have to lose one or two of these. And I hate saying that, but if you look at the history of the, the event, I'm about to get kicked out of this bar. If you look at the history of the event, uh, we've only lost once. Uh, and we tied once, I think, and, and other than that, it's just been the Team USA show. Ryder Cup went through this in the early part of the 20, 20th century where Team USA dominated forever. There was a blip of a heartbeat for the, the Brits, but then it came back to Team USA all the way up until they integrated the team with the continental Europe. So I think that's my only kind of hot, dark, you know, sadistic take is – if we want the President's Cup to actually mean something, they, they're going to have to lose one of these one of these days. It's not going to be this day. You look it ain't going to be this top one. To bottom. No. It's not going to be this one. Nope. No. And I think the thing is, they're, you know, just looking at the list, too, Adam Scott and Jason Day are running out of time to stay on this list. Yeah. They're going to need other guys to start <clears throat> kind of stepping up. Not that they're – I mean, Adam Scott was – he's been up there lately, but – but no, I just look right. at even the even their their top six versus our top six. I mean, there's it's it's not even there it's not even close, if I'm being honest, you know. I don't even no, know. No, and I think I think honestly, uh the live thing hurts the internationals more. You're missing yeah. out on Joaquin Neiman, Carlos Ortiz, uh, uh Cam Smith. I mean, all of these guys yeah. that are heavy hitters in the global game. And I think you could you could make an argument that that's the biggest hit that Liv has made to any of these tours or competitions because the Ryder Cup is the Ryder Cup. And we've it, both organi- organizations have shown we're just going to put 12 out there because of the business entities that are involved with the President's Cup. It's not prudent to do that at this time. Wouldn't be prudent. A little shout out for the Gen X or the millennials there. Um, <laughs> but, but that's, you know, I think that's where they're missing out. They're missing out on some of those. And, they did it to themselves. They set their own table, and I know I'm, I'm a big over here. The PGA Tour's got a deep bench, and so uh, and so does international golf. But who knows? Maybe this is the uh, maybe we're all going to be eating crow here, you know, come the end of the weekend. Yeah, maybe. We're I'm excited to see Tom Kim and some more uh, team play events too. I think that's going to be really exciting. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping like you know Tom Connors Kim. and Hughes just buy into the whole Canadian, be into the home country. You know, it's hope they perform well. At least uh, you want to see that you want to see from the host country. You like seeing those guys lean into it. You know, earlier this year we had uh, Bobby Mack, Robert McIntyre with the Scottish Open in Scotland. Yeah. And you see how like how that Bryson DeChambeau. I mean, I know it sounds cliche because we're used to Americans winning majors right now, but having an American win the U.S. Open, especially at a place like Pinehurst. So mm-hmm. your point's valid. You know, I wouldn't mind seeing. I mean, obviously, I want us to get the dub. The story in me wouldn't mind seeing maybe a Canadian sink a 53-footer for the win, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it'll be it'll, it's going to be an interesting, um, interesting weekend. I know we're we're excited, especially we were talking about beforehand, just the uh, the format of like you know the best ball and um, just just kind of the different way that they allude to with with team golf and giving giving you know giving everybody their their chance to shine and also maybe. You know, you get those unsung heroes of those people that we're talking about, though, like the six or two or the six or twelve that might not. Maybe be, maybe they'll have a big moment to show why they were on the team or why they were selected, rather than you know over other people. So I I always love that kind of stuff. Um, I, I'm always a big, uh, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Underdog favorite. I love watching the people just kind of get a get like Homa. I'd love to see Homa just go out and just absolutely turn it up. It's like at a music festival when you find out that, you know, somebody who went on at 3 p.m. just absolutely smoked to the mm-hmm. point where the headliner's like, hey, bring him back at 11. I'm going to bring – you know what I mean? It's like that's where Hell we yeah. got Tom Kim to bring up Tom Kim. Why? Right. Because the President's Cup two years ago, and he was a fiery little guy. Uh, and, you know, Cam Davis from the Australian, you know, selective, uh, like four years ago. He was another one that it's like, who the hell is this tall, lanky guy just handed it to us? So there might be one one of them out there. Benny On was the longest guy, one of the longest guys on tour. He's on that team. Um, obviously, like you said, Jason Day and Adam Scott. If they're if they're clicking, they've been there before. They're major champions, and so the table is set for that upset. I don't think it's going to happen, but um, I don't know. Like I keep saying, the 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 long the, in the long run, I kind of pull for maybe a loss here and there, some scar tissue, so maybe it starts to mean a little bit more. The way that the Ryder Cup burns so badly yeah. for us right now. Right. Even like for them to go out and just struggle on day one or something, and then you know, yeah. kickstart them a little bit. You know, for the for the U.S. Yeah. to struggle uh, on day one and see uh, them get 
you know, whipped into shape. Yeah, I want the blood to be pumping. I don't want to wake up Sunday morning, have this thing wrapped up, you know, by my morning tea. Right. <laughs> um, I got a quick question for you, though, just real quick. Sure. Do you have, if you had to pick anybody on either side who would be having a surprisingly good weekend, uh, do you have one or two players that maybe you think will kind of uh, open the eyes of the public? Uh, yeah, I think, I think honestly, from the, from the other side, Tom, Tom Kim, he's going to have a big weekend. I don't think that's a sneaky, good, sneaky take. I think, um, look for any of the Canadians. I just think any of those Canadians are going to catch lightning in a bottle and they're going to be, you know, wearing all that red on our side. Watch out for Russell Henley. Russell Henley shot 63 to close out the tour championship. He was just kind of inching his way up, and uh, he's been a badass force in the red, white, blue uh, before. So there's a lot of big brand names, quote unquote, up and down our lineup. But I wouldn't be shocked if a guy like Russell Henley is who we're talking about come Monday. Yeah, I think um, I think it was Danny Rapp said it. Like he didn't win anything this year, and he still won like almost ten million dollars. Like he was just yeah. top twenties yeah. every. That's the dog. That's the dog. In. Yeah. Who do you think, uh, like, thinking team play? Like, obviously, Scheffler and Burns are always kind of rolling together, Shoffley and Cantlay. Yeah, Who buddies. do you think Gala is going to get grouped with? Because he could, that um, could be interesting. He, he, shoot, he shoots with Fino, doesn't he? I'm pretty sure they've matched up together a couple of times. I don't think played a they would be, thing before. He's never they would make the sense because Tigala, this is where Jordan Speeds would come in handy because you need somebody who's yeah. all over the damn map because that's Tigala. Tigala can... His, he's a Jordan Speed kind of Walter Hagen type where, hey, four strokes still makes par, whether they're ugly or not, you can get around. So you do want him. You don't want him with like a Colin Morikawa who is an assassin, no, but yeah. he has to be sitting in a desk perfectly aimed, and he'll hit it. Um, you got to get somebody more creative. I could see Thigala and Scotty, honestly, because Scotty Scheffler, is, he might be the one. Again, Brian Harmon, not really much of a – they can shape the ball, but you know what I mean. He's not a hacker. Yeah. He just – Bunts it down there and makes a bunch of put, a bunch of putts. Uh, mm-hmm. Same thing with Max Homa. He's more of kind of a Max Colin or a cow with that Cal Bears thing. So I think Thigala and maybe Scotty Scheffler uh, or Sam Burns. So one of those Texas guys who knows how yeah. to play in troubled conditions because they've always had to punch it in the wind and do this and do yeah. that. They're shop shape. They're shop shot shapers out there <laughs> in Texas. Now that you guys mentioned it, uh, it's going to be it, it will be cool to see how some of these matchups come about like just to see who gets teamed up with who that, that's going to be it's I'm, one of the I'm most intrigued. fun parts of the week yeah. is to watch the to watch the announcements i think that's one thing that they do cool with the president's cup is if memory serves me right they do it every night they they finish play and then the two captains are sitting up there and they're like all right tomorrow morning boom uh rider cup we have to wait just a little bit longer so right yeah yeah cool well you got anything else just kind of heading into this week uh, those or? are the two big things i think i was coming into this i was thinking to myself yeah, we might we might have to lose one. And I hate spreading that because people are going to come chirping at me. But whatever, it's kind of like when Rigsy, you know, picked uh, Rigsy over <laughs> four play when he picked Europe. Europe. So yeah. He was predicting Europe was going to win. I'm just saying what would be the healthiest for the overall uh, the overall play. Uh, no, the only other thing I think is fun to watch when you watch this is people take note that this is the oldest club in course in, in North America, and especially the oldest continuously operating Royal Montreal, 150 years old. This is almost like the closest thing that we have to St. Andrews, even though there's Shinnecock Hills, I would say this. This is way back in the day. And if you dig around this in the history, they've got a really, really interesting uh, history with their ladies' membership and how that was integrated super early. So shout out to the host. That's going to be the sneaky good kind of uh, star of the show. Heck yeah. Well, bud, as we as we always do, we appreciate you and your uh, your ever everlasting uh, enlightenment to the game of golf. Just trying to be a value add. There it is. All right, boys. Well, there you have it. There's a President's Cup preview with our buddy uh, Bud Copeland. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you after the weekend.